Good. Hi, everyone. My name is Nathan, and I'm one of the marketing managers at Data Science Dojo. Uh, today, I have Usman Shahid with me. He is one of our data scientists and teaching assistants. And today, he's going to be going over Azure Custom Vision. Uh, we're going to build, train, and actually deploy a model today. So, uh, Usman, thanks for joining us, and we're really happy to have you. Hi, uh, thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Ethan. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you're from. Um, I am to understand we have a very diverse audience, so that's good. Um, as Nathan mentioned, I am a data scientist at Data Science Dojo. I work on some of the consultancy pro consulting projects here at the company, and I am also an instructor for their public bootcamp. Um, today, we're going to be working through um, one of the cloud-based services called Azure Custom Vision. Um, it's just, essentially, it's a computer vision um, service, uh, sort of fully managed uh, uh, in the uh, computer vision service in the cloud that you can actually use to get, get through uh, deploying very, very robust and amazing computer vision models uh, very easily. Um, so before I get started, I just wanted to give you a bit of background into the idea behind this webinar. Um, the goal is, so at Data Science Dojo, one of our primary focuses are we focus on data, data science and machine learning, but um, what we, the, the idea that we instill in our, in our attendees during our boot camps is the fact that machine learning and data science, they're just tools um, that you need, that you can use to solve real problems, business problems that you have in your, <clears throat> that you face. Um, the problem or the, the, one of the big issues that we feel um, has become recently is the fact that AI and machine learning has become a huge hype word, right? So everyone is doing the deep learning and everyone is doing machine learning. And uh, the frameworks such as um, Keras and TensorFlow and PyTorch, they've, they've become so common um, that the general understanding is that you need to be able to understand these tools and you need to be able to code complex neural networks to be able to do or to get any value from machine learning or data, uh, deep learning. But that's not the case, right? So the purpose or the idea behind this this, this big, beginner's guide to custom vision is the fact is to introduce you guys to really simple techniques and really simple tools that are available um, that don't depend on high, hardcore programming, understanding programming language and uh, complex uh, frameworks. Um, and these tools are essentially, they're essentially very easy to deploy and you can very, very um, easily uh, get the, in, the insights that you need um, for your business, right? And if you're, if that's, if you're getting value from machine learning uh, for your business, you're essentially, uh, you're essentially doing yourself a favor. Um, so I'm gonna get started. And so the custom vision API or the custom vision service that is uh, supported by Microsoft is actually essentially a computer vision uh, um, co computer vision service in the cloud. Um, for those of you who don't know uh, or are new to machine learning, computer vision is essentially a sub branch of machine learning, uh, which deals with giving computers the ability to see and interpret and uh, extract information from images and by extension, uh, videos, of course, um, because videos can be seen as collection of, of images, right? Um, so th that's essentially what computer vision is. And to give a bit of background into how it works, right? So uh, what a computer vision algorithm would do is it would just like a human or like a baby learns, uh, you, you teach, essentially you teach a baby by uh, introducing it to different stimuli. Um, if you want to teach it to recognize a cat, um, you would tell the baby to, you would show the baby a cat and, and sort of essentially make it understand that the word cat is associated with that uh, animal. And that's what computer vision, uh, computer vision model does as well, right? So you will essentially feed it um, uh, thousands, uh, if not more, uh, images of cats. And it's going to do some complex mathematics in the background. It's going to do some feature extraction, et cetera, et cetera. And it's going to learn some key understanding or key properties that define cats, right? So if I were to give it images that I've given it, uh, that I've shown here, um, it's going to understand that cats come in white and gray and um, black uh, and uh, essentially uh, gray, right? But if I if I were to train my model on the, uh, these images and then show it uh, a tabby cat that was orange in color, 
it would have a hard time recognizing it's a cat because it was trained on these mo- it, images it learned that you know the cats are essentially white and brown and black right um and then once the model is trained on the images it has extracted the features and it is trained it you can actually use it to predict if um if a new image that you provided with if, if it's a cat or it's not a cat um as with every machine learning application and as with every machine learning uh, model out there the model is not the important part the fundamental the fact that it's going to determine how good your model is is the data you feed it um and this is again another point that we really really want to make uh, uh we want to focus on is the fact that your model is only as good as your data so one of the key things that we're going to focus on today as well is how to make sure that our data is good uh when we're building uh computer vision models right um okay so going forward so computer vision uh can sort of computer vision deal with all the problems that you might uh and that you might have related to images and videos right so uh, there's a lot of techniques and a lot of fundamental a lot of problems that can be uh, tackled with computer vision a few of them i've i've uh, covered here uh, facial recognition is something that is very common nowadays um that's a computer vision problem uh, computer vision can be used to solve image classification problems uh, image segmentation problems uh, edge detection problems pattern detection problems um and ob- ob- of course object detection right so object detection and image classification are the two things that we're going to talk about today and we're going to go into the the predictive model we built that's going to be um an object detection model so i will go into the details of them um uh, in a bit later on um okay so the when i was talking about earlier i spoke about ai and machine learning have becoming having become a sort of like a hype right so everyone's doing deep learning and ai and machine learning but the focus is always on libraries the focus is always on programmatically uh, building complex networks from scratch and this is essentially a, what a typical computer vision architecture would look like um, if you would go about building one from scratch right so you would have your input data uh which is going to be the images that you would want to train your model on but those images might be coming from a lot of different sources right and machine learning uh depends on on standardization so you know you would need to pre-process those images to make sure that they're all of the same uh size for example and if it go back to the cat example one image might have a very close up of a cat and the, another image might show the cat at, at a distant uh distance right so these things they, they, these ideas need to be standardized cats need to be um shown at a, of a similar size uh, uh they need to be equidistant from this uh, from the screen then there's other issues uh, around um color uh, the color profiles not matching in the images uh, there might be noise in the images all of that needs to be uh, dealt with before the i before the image is fed into the model and if it's not done um your model might pick up noise your model might pick up other features that are not good features that are that, that are sort of problematic and it might learn from those and those would that would actually mean that your model is going to be uh fundamentally flawed um at the end so pre processing is essentially it's very important that need to be needs to be done then the third step is um this is what we call labeling your data so you need to if you are doing an object detection uh, problem and you have images with different objects uh, so if you have an image with a cat and a dog you would need to label that specific part of the image where there's a cat and this need to label or add tags to that specific area where there's a dog so this is essentially labeling and this needs to be done as well um and then feature extraction and uh, prediction uh, essentially these are part of if you're doing a deep learning model these are part of the model training right so your model um, your algorithm learns uh, about what features are present it extracts the features it thinks are relevant from the images that you uh, gave it and then from what it's learn uh, what it's extracted it learns uh, patterns among those features and that's how it uses it actually builds a uh, sort of a sort of a sort of rules for itself and on how to predict uh, information or how to extract information from images and this is a, this is an entire end to end pipeline so if you're building a model using tensorflow or keras for example you you need to go through all of these steps right and these are 
very intricate and important steps and if you mess up even one of them uh, you might uh, end up having a bad model on your hand and a bad model is essentially a, uh, it's worse than having no model at all um but what we don't really talk about or what we don't see uh, in the mainstream media is the fact that cloud services have become very very good uh, and they're they're extremely easy to use in these scenarios so everything that i did right here all of these parts they can very easily be taken up by a cloud service uh, that is running a computer vision model in the cloud so in, in a saas saas is, is, is essentially a software as a service that is offered by all providers like you know azure amazon um, aws essentially uh, google cloud all of them offer some variation of these of this computer vision service so in 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 that architecture all you need to do is you need to have your images and you need to upload them and tag them tagging is is absolutely vital you can't skip it you have to do it here in this area and you have to do it here as well because you as the domain expert you know what information is present in those images so this part needs to be done but once you've uploaded them uh, in the in the cloud uh, the model training and everything that is completely dependent on the cloud provider and this is actually amazing right because uh, this part this entire pipeline outside of uploading and tagging images this is completely fully managed by the cloud service provider so if you go if you the first model that you built has let's say 50 images just as a as a prototype but then you scale it up to maybe a million images you don't need to worry about uh, uh, how to scale that compute or how to scale that uh, the processing power that that model requires all of that is managed by the cloud service provider it's extremely easy to scale um, and now nowadays most of these providers they actually allow you to download the models that you've built so that you can use them offline as well right? you're not dependent on you're not dependent on these providers uh, to support you so once you've trained it you can just download the model and you know you can use it wherever you want and if you don't want to download it or if, even if you do download it you can just simply use the um, uh, simple rest apis to query that model and get the predictions you need um, at wh whatever time you want um extremely reliable and amazingly simple um, services um so like i mentioned the saas architecture it's common um, across the board every cloud provider uh, uh, the may big three i know for, for a fact right so amazon uh, aws um, azure and google cloud they offer similar services but uh, and all of them are essentially exactly the same there might be fundamental differences in the ui or how you are uploading images or the api or how you're calling the services but under the hood they're doing the same thing and if you are uh, if you understand how one service works you will not have a, a difficult time uh, migrating to a different service right so if you understand how azure custom vision works you will not have uh, a difficulty you will not have any difficulty understanding how google's um, uh, image recognition api works or amazon's image recognition api works so today uh, in this um, tutorial we are actually going to be spending the next 30 35 minutes uh, building a custom vision uh, model on azure and we, you'll see how easy it is so we'll build we'll upload the images we'll train the model from scratch and then once it's trained uh, we'll actually go ahead and consume it which essentially means that we are going to use that model in a, a specific use case that we have right now um so let's get started and guys if you have any questions uh, please post them in the q and I will get to them um after the uh, at the end of the session so let's go okay so the custom mission service is actually available at customation.ai i'm going to go here so um the notebooks that i'm going to use i they will be uh, i'll upload them to a git repository um after the session ends and uh, we'll share the links with you as well um as far as this service goes uh, i will upload the training images and everything else that i uh, i'm using on the repository as well but as far as the service goes um this is a paid service from um, azure so you would need to um, go ahead and create an account on azure um, and deploy the service before you're able to use it but if i'm not mistaken i do i do remember that azure provides um, sort of like a getting started uh, credits if you don't have an account with them any um, so you can actually go ahead and you get if you register 
uh, for, a, for, a, for an account for the first time, you get uh, some sort of credits to try out their services. So it would be a good idea to just go and play around with it. It's actually very easy and very fun. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start building a new project right here. Um, standard stuff, I'm gonna write, give it a name, custom mission tutorial. I can add a description here as well. Um, and resource group, this is something, this is essentially a, a Azure thing. Uh, you don't need to worry about it. I do want to bring your attention to um, these guys, uh, this these selection uh, boxes at the bottom. So we talked about earlier, we talked about um, computer vision having different uh, techniques that can be used to solve different problems. The custom machine API supports classification techniques and object detection techniques. So essentially, um, if you have any problem, classification problem or an object detection problem, you can simply deploy a, uh, build a model here. I'm gonna start with object detection. Um, as the name implies, uh, it's as simple as that. Um, if you have objects in your images, any object that you might want, right? So an object can be a water bottle or a table or a car or a stop sign or a tree, etc. cetera. Um, this is the way, this is the route you want to go. And um, so the good thing about these cloud services is the fact that they employ something called transfer learning. And what that essentially mean is that they already have models trained in the background. Um, they already have these models trained and they are trained to pick up specific items. Um, but they're not very specific, right? So uh, a, a model might be able to pick up uh, an object detection, pre-trained object detection model might be able to pick up, understand that there is an object like a person or a table in the foreground of the image, but it, it would not know what that object is, right? So this is called transfer learning. So it understands that there is something there, but it does not know what is there. And if you were doing this from scratch using any of the uh, any of the libraries, you would need to do this entirely yourself as well. You would need to teach the uh, uh, model that there is something there, and then you would need to teach it that okay, what is this thing? So these domains essentially, what they talk about is what that model has been, uh, what specific area that model has been uh, 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 built for, right? So you can have uh, uh, you, if you switch a domain uh, to logo. Uh, the object direction model, it would actually work better on images that have logos in them, or that want to extract logos from them. From them. Um, if you click on products on shelves, the um, the model that would be built, it would perform better on products that are on shelves, essentially as the name implies. The general domain is for everything else, right? So it's been trained on essentially as general as possible. Classification is a bit different. Classification talks about, um, so in object detection, you were actually, uh, extracting information about objects present in the images. In classification, you are talking about classifying an entire image as one class or the other class. So if you go back to the example that we gave about cats earlier on, um, in that example, one image, entire image might be classified as a cat or not a cat. So like an image of a cat or an image of not a cat, that would be a classification example. But if it was an object detection model, um, that model would actually pick out or sort of build a region or a square around the area where the cat is. Um, going back to classification, there's two types of cl uh, classification that uh, uh, custom machine supports. Uh, a multi-class classification essentially is that you have two or more classes, so an op and um, uh, 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 you can classify images as a cat or not a cat. Um, where each image has only one item or one object of interest. In a multi-label setting, which is this guy, uh, you would have multiple tags per image. What essentially that means is that one image might uh, have both a cat and a dog, and your model would be able to classify or understand that, okay, so this image has two items there, and I would need to classify that appropriately. Going back to domains, um, again, the same concept applies here, but, uh, these domains are a bit different, so you can you can have uh, there's food domains if you want if your images are specifically focused towards food um, on a plate, for example, or a drink in the class, for example, or if your uh, uh, items or if your images are specifically focused towards landmark or retail, etc. And then we have these compact domains as well, and I'm going to talk about these at the end because I need to relate it with something else. But just keep in mind that we have you know for every normal domain out there, there's a compact domain available as well. Um, so yeah, 
I'm going to go. So th the problem I'm going to work on today is the, an object detection problem. So I'm going to go with object detection, and I want to do a mass classification. So I'm going to go by general, and I'm going to create my project. While this project is uh, while this project is spinning, uh, getting uh, spun up, uh, I want to show you a bit of a background into what the problem statement that we want to talk about today is. So the problem that you want to solve is related to COVID. Uh, we picked this because essentially uh, we've been in lockdown for over a year uh, and we related that a lot, right? So the idea is that we have a small business owner or maybe a hospital wants to um, see if the people entering the hospital um, are wearing their masks or not, right? So we have a snippet, a video snippet. I'm going to show that to you right now. Okay, so we have this video snippet, and we can see that the people are wear, uh, the people coming into the hospital. They're sanitizing their hands, and they're wearing their masks, and uh, they're walking in. So let's just imagine that this video is an extract from a CCTV image captured by the uh, by a camera in the hospital, and we need to figure out and we need to sort of generate an alert if um, someone if someone comes in who is not wearing a mask. So what we did i'm going to show you the end result right here in just one minute um so this is essentially what the output of the um the model would look like right so we've built it so that it takes in the uh, video as a collection of images it classifies whether um it detects whether there's a person in the image or not and if it's wearing a he he's, or she is wearing a mask or not and if they are wearing masks it tags them as compliant and it does not generate an alert. But if there is a person here who is not wearing a mask, uh, the uh, model would recognize it. It would say that there's okay, there's uh, one of the people here are not wearing a mask, and it would generate a, a sort of an alert. And that's the business idea we want to work with, right? Um, we're going to show you how to build this um, sort of like this image sort of thing, uh, and how we are using custom vision to leverage this information or get this information. Um, okay. So while I was talking about that, my model, uh, my project has uh, has been brought up by Custom Vision, and this it, this is essentially the the home page of your project, right? So uh, my Custom Vision tutorial. The first thing I want to do is um, so the first thing I want to do, or I would want to do, is I would want to add my training images here. So I'm just going to click on Add Images, and I'm going to go ahead, and I already have these images downloaded, so I'm just going to upload them all here. It's going to upload these 20 files. Okay. It's going to take maybe a minute to upload it. Okay, the upload is done. So the second thing, the second thing I need to do is I need to understand what I want to get out of this, uh, this model or what objects I need this model to work on or to detect. For me, the problem is very simple. I want to detect uh, a person if a person is there in an image, in an image or in a video, and I want to detect if the person is wearing a mask or not. So I will create two tags here, and these tags will essentially be uh, the things or the classes that need to be predicted or they need to be uh, detected, right? So I'm going to create a pro uh, create a mask tag here, and I'm going to create save. So I have to so this uh, this. Uh, there's two tabs here. So the untagged tab has all of these 20 images that I uploaded right now. The tag tab has no images, and it says that no, uh, I haven't labeled any of the images as masks or persons. But we need to do the labeling right here. So this labeling needs to be done manually, and this this needs to be done smartly. So you know, I'm just going to do that here. And remember what I said about about transfer learning about um, these models already being pre-trained to some extent. That can be seen here, right? So I haven't done anything yet. I have just I just uploaded a raw image, but the model or the service detected that there is some object here, and it showed me a dotted box here. It doesn't know what this object is. It doesn't know that, but it knows that there is something here. So if I can, if I want to tag this thing as a, this object as a person, I can just click here, and I can click on person, and now this service knows that this item or this object is a person. 
I can do the same thing for this person here. There we are. But it does not recognize a mask, right? Because again, this was a general domain. You know, it, it is entirely possible that um, Microsoft Azure did not train their, their fundamental models to recognize masks. So I can do that for it. I can actually just go ahead and make this bounding box here and I can tag this item as a mask. And I can do the same uh, for here as well. I just clicked on mask and there we go. See, simple as that. And I will need to do that for every image that I have. This is, this is going to take a bit of time, so I'm not going to do that for every image. I already have a uh, model built uh, where I've tagged all the images. I'm going to go to that in just one minute. But I want to show you one more thing, right? So remember when you talked about or when we discussed that your model is only as good as the data it is uh, working with. So I can tag a person. This is a person, and I said, okay, this this is fine. But I know. And, oh, look. The good thing is it detected a mask because I had tagged it previously so it automatically detected this here so if i i being the labeler or the tag uh, the, uh, the 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 main expert in the situation if i had tagged a mask as this do you guys think it would have been a good idea or do you think this was this would have been a good lib i i would have or this would have been called a good label in this situation um i i don't think right i don't think so because one of the key features of the mask is the fact that it has these strings coming at the back. So if I were to if I were to add this entire thing as a tag, as the mask tag, the custom vision model would understand that these strings also contribute to part being a part of the mask and it would use them as feature features as well. But if I were not to add this here, if I were just to do this, so I would be losing a crucial piece of information. And that's very important, right? So we need to understand as as the domain expert uh, experts in this situation, we need to understand what is a good way to label and what information I want the model to, to use and what information I don't want the model to use. So we need to be very careful when you're actually um, doing these uh, this part. Um, okay, so this is what I, what I wanted to talk about. And because I had tagged these two images, I can see that they're, they're showing up here. I'm not gonna tag all of them. I already have a, a different project available in which I've tagged all of them. But I want to uh, direct you guys to one more thing here. The performance tab. Right now, uh, I just want to show you that this is empty. There's nothing here. We can go to the predictions tab. And this is empty here. And once I have tagged all of the images that I want, I can simply go and click on train. And what this does is, so it pops up this this sort of like this uh, check uh, this box where I can actually sit, uh, choose from two types of training. The quick training is essentially what the name suggests. It is uh, it is the most optimum way of training your model based on what Azure determines uh, through its optimization techniques. It is going to give you a good balance between uh, ac between the results or between the accuracy of your model and the training time. But if you want to go into more detail, you can actually go into advanced training. In advanced training, you have more power on what, how, how well you want your model to be trained. As a general rule of thumb, the more training time you allot to your model, the better it's going to be. But then there comes a time when, um, so each hour that you add to the training budget, it's costing you in terms of, uh, in terms of resources because the, this training is actually you're paying for this training. And as well as in time, in terms of the time that you're using to train the model, so there comes a point after which, so after which the um, improvement you get in accuracy or the improvement you get in your model is not worth the amount you're spending in terms of resources and time on training the model. So you need to figure out the thing about quick training is that it it does that optimization automatically. But with advanced training, you need to have, you need to figure out what that sweet spot is. So what you would do is you would try, you would start off with maybe uh, setting a training budget of two hours, right? And see how your model is performing. If the model is good enough for your application, well and good, you're done. But if it's not, right, you, you think that you can add more images and you think that, you know, increasing the training time and adding more images and have, adding better quality images is gonna improve your model, you can go ahead and incrementally start to uh, put in more, training hours and see how that how your model uh, uh, performs. 
um and essentially once you once you selected what you want to do you just go ahead and hit train so um i i'm not going to train this model right now because uh training does take time training does take a uh, good bit of time so what i did was i had already done uh built a pre-trained uh, trained model previously and i'm going to go there just to make sure that we get on with the project uh, with the webinar okay so it's the same essentially this is the same model uh, the same uh, images that i had there i have added them here but the difference is that i have them tagged right so um every image that i had uploaded i have already tagged previously and i have also trained it uh, so i've done the training part and i can just go to the performance tab right here and i can see that my training was completed my training was completed it calculated these um uh these uh <clears throat> metrics of evaluation it calculated these and just to evaluate how my model was working i can go into these uh in a lot more detail these are uh each of these can have an entire hour long discussion on, on you know themselves and it's our discussing these is out of the scope of this uh of this uh webinar but uh, Nathan is going to share some very good resources if you want to understand what precision and recall and mean absolute uh, average precision are. If you want to get into a, a good understanding of these, Nathan is going to po post um, links to them in the chat and you can actually just go ahead and uh, understand what these things are. Right now, the precision is 100%. The precision is essentially means that um, if your model predicts something, how likely it is that it's going to be right. So. Right now, the precision is at 100%, which means that if any prediction is made, it's going to be 100% accurate. And that's that's essentially, that's not, a, that's not a good thing, right? It is a good thing in terms of if you think of it that way, but no real world problem is going to give you a precision of 100%. It's not possible. So if you are getting something like this, uh, if you are getting a very high value for precision, that means there's something wrong in your model and you need to go back and evaluate what, what went wrong. We are getting 100% here because we just have 20 images uploaded, and those images are very controlled images. There is no noise there. Uh, they are most of them, if you remember correctly, most of them are in in controlled background, so they, they don't have anything happening in the background. It's just plain colors there. So obviously, the model is going to be very good at it. Um, but if you see anything as good as these metrics in in real world scenarios, you need to go back and see what's what what's happening because uh, you might. It depends on the problem, really. It depends on the problem and your data. You might get good results, but um, you know you would need to you would need to verify. You, you you would need to do your due diligence here because you are the domain expert. Once the model, once you're satisfied with this model, you can just go ahead and click on publish. So I've already published this, but if you if it hadn't been published, you can just go and click on it and publish. Once the model is published, it's available to the entire world for to use, and Obviously, it's available. What that means is, yeah, anyone can use it as long as they have the prediction URLs and the prediction field. And I'm going to assume. So this is essentially uh, you can simply use a get uh, a REST API get get method to send an image to this model, and it's going to return a list of tags that it has calculated along with the um, probability percentage probability of that. Uh, we're going to build. We're going to take this information and we're going to go and copy this into our notebook. So I have the face mask URL here, and I have the prediction key uh, variable right here. So essentially, whoever now uh, my global variables um, file has the credentials that uh, it needs to connect to the uh, to the custom vision project that I built. So I'm going to go into my um, into my code base, into my the notebook that I built. And I'm going to sort of, because we're actually uh, short on time and I want to get to the questions as well. Um, I'm not going to go through every cell. I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of this, what this, uh, of the notebook is doing. And since we are, we, we will be sharing this, um, you can actually just go through it yourself and uh, understand what's happening here. So what we're doing in this notebook is we have the video that I showed you guys earlier. Um, this video. What we're doing is we are splitting this video, chunking it out into individual frames. 
an individual each individual frame would be one image right and we are sending this uh, this frame uh, each frame to the custom vision project that we deployed through the through the rest api once it's there the custom vision project uh, the custom vision model it calculates um whatever objects are there it calculates the person and the mask in that specific image that it got and it returns a uh, probability value of that of that of that item uh, like it, it's going to say in one image it's 60 percent sure that there's an there's a person there and in this convert video function we are essentially doing is we are taking the the images uh, the information we got from a custom vision we are imposing it on to um the images that we had or the frames that we had and we're stitching them together into a video and i'm going to show you how how, how we're doing that right so it's it, this is going to sound a bit uh inconsistent or incoherent but just try to follow along um so what the custom vision api returned was essentially a probability of the tag uh, it actually returned the image or the the frame that it uh, it was sent and for that frame it returns the probability of what tag is there so it says uh, in this image it is 70 percent sure that there's a person there and it is 67 percent sure there's another person there and it is uh you know in in if you go down scroll down somewhere there there will be it's going to detect masks as well which is okay so it says that in this specific image in this specific uh, 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 uh that that uh, area it says that there's a 34 percent chance that there's a mask available and what we're doing is we are um so we have these frames let me show you so we have these frames available just the the image frames and we are superimposing the information we got from the custom vision api on top of this frame just to show that okay this person is here and this mask was detected here and we've added this sort of like uh, uh, this sort of uh, uh, st uh, statistics uh, at the side to show that uh, you know the number of people it, uh, it detected and the number of masks it detected and we're calculating whether this uh, this image is or this this sort of scene is compliant with the fact that you know there are equal number of people in masks in them and all of this is done in our notebook so this is uh, this uh, this image that i'm showing you here this is the, this is not a, a, a property of custom vision this is what we're doing ourselves we're using the uh, um, cv library the open cv library with python to do all this image processing on our end and you can do this if you want or you can you can't you, you don't if you don't need to you don't you don't have to do this part but the idea that i want to show you is that we are actually getting these this information um in a, uh, of these probabilities and um, sort of the the tags and we can use them as we want so i'm going to go back and i'm going to go back to the predictions tab and i'm going to show you something right here so every prediction or every frame that gets sent to custom vision it gets stored um, in the predictions tab and the good thing is that the custom vision api as uh, a custom vision model it learns from this as well right so these all of these images were sent when i ran the code when i ran the code in this notebook um it sent 70 frames to custom vision and all of these frames are recorded here and i can click on any one of them and i can see what the recording was or what the classification was and i can see the probability with which the the custom with the certainty with which the uh, model had classified uh, whether it was a person or not or whether it was a mask or not and the amazing part is if i want to if i see that something was mislabeled or misclassified um for example okay it was pretty good right it classified mask here as well so this image is it's, it's, it's essentially perfect so i can just say that i'm very happy with this image and i can just click on the tick mark here and what this does is it takes this image and it trains uses this to train the model as well so if i if i see something that is misclassified i see that it classifies this bit of hair as a mask i can just delete this tag from here okay i can just delete this here or i can just uh if i can okay
I can just delete that from here. Uh, I, I, it's not happening right now for some reason. I can, interesting. But, uh, or if I think that it's misclassified something, I can go ahead and I can change the, the item that is, is misclassified, or I can change the bounding boxes of this. And what it is going to do, the API, it's going to take this information and use it to train future model, the, its future model or improve the model, right? So essentially, it makes things better while you're using it. So that's actually a very, very sort of like an interesting, interesting thing that uh, this this um, API does. And I had made a tick marked it, so it, it used it for training, and it, it, that image would have gone into the um, training images file, right? So again, so once we have all this information, what we're essentially doing is in this convert video function, you, uh, this is actually explained in a, uh, in a lot more detail in the functions.py file that I'll be sharing as well. You can just go through that. Uh, we're adding, in this function, we're adding all the information we build. You're getting the frames that we sent to custom vision. We're getting the information that we got from custom vision. We're mixing it together. We're doing some image processing. You know, We're building some extra statistics tables, etc., And we're outputting the video that we built in uh, dumping it on our local machine. Uh, uh, it's simple as that, right? So, and I ran into an indentation error. Interesting. I can fix that later on as well. Okay, I'll, I'll fix that later on. Uh, but the, essentially, the idea is that once that's done, um, I get something like this, right? I get something, I get these, uh, so I sent 70 frames to Custom Vision API, and I have these frames uh, uh, that are uh, that I built later on each of these individual frames that I built. And I, I can simply combine them together. I can stitch them together into a video. And that's going to be my eventual the output the result file that I have. So, you know, we spent maybe 30 minutes on this. Um, we spent maybe 30 minutes on this entire API, uh, on this entire service. And we built a completely uh, Excluding the training time, we built an end-to-end -end sort of a machine, a computer-based model. We uploaded images, we trained the model, and we consumed or used that in our in our application. So, the idea, the point that I want to make here is that it's essentially it's that simple, you know, minus the training time, uh, and minus the time that you would need to label um, images and come up with good, decent training image information. Um, it's essentially it's that easy, and I see a. Uh, uh, a question in the chat that can image labeling and tagging be automated um so that's a very tricky question right so it microsoft this service actually it offers something called uh, the smart labeler a uh, labeler and what it does is it asks you to tag a few maybe four five or six images in this at the start and then it says okay now i'm going to try and label the rest of them uh, myself so it's going to clump them together and it's going to ask you for validation maybe it's going to clump seven images together and say okay do you think these are correct and if you say okay so those seven images will be um, automatically tagged but again uh, using machine learning to label images is something that you need to be very cautious about when you're doing that because uh, machine learning is unpredictable and if you taint your input data the model that you'll, you'll be building it's not going to be that good right but the good part is that the custom mission service has the, everything that I did here, everything that I did from this portal can be done via an API call, can be done programmatically. So if you have coordinates of the regions, right? So if you have the coordinates of where this mask is, you have these these values right here. And if you have the values of this, this, this label right here, and if you have them in a file, you can simply just call, <clears throat> um, there must be the create create image tag or there must be there's a let me actually search for it yeah create image tags right so you can just call this create image tags uh, function uh, uh, api you can give it the uh, the list of tags that you have or the coordinates with the coordinates there and you can just you can just uh, uh, send it over. Uh, you can just post it, and it's going to tag those image aut images automatically. Uh, I'm sorry. I think it was the get image create image regions function, not the create image tags function. Sorry. 
So, you know, if you call this call this API, you could provide it with um, sort of the coordinates from the top left, um, sorry. Yeah, so you give it these in the, the coordinates from the top left um, width and height and the image ID and the tag ID, it's gonna create all of these automatically for you, provided you have these uh, available. Um, and then there's all of these other functions as well that you can use to uh, programmatically make your life easier when you're working with um, custom vision. Um, okay, so I hope that makes sense, right? Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, one more thing that I wanted to talk about here is the fact that um, one of the concerns that people might have had was that if I have my model in the cloud and there's always going to be a lag or a delay when you're querying it. Right? So if you have to send something over the internet, there is going to be a delay there. So, or if you want to use your uh, model in an offline application, if you want to use it in your in in, app, in a mobile application. So one of the questions or one of the problems that you might have is that can I download this information? Or can I download this model that I built for offline use? And that's what what's amazing is that you know this thing that you built in in just thirty minutes, you can get that model very easily. Um, download it onto your machine and deploy it anywhere you want. You can have, so if I'm talking about a small business, um, uh, you can actually have that small business can download this model and have it running on a small computer uh, 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 on in their shop, right? And if you remember, I talked about these compact domains earlier and I said that we're gonna go into uh, a bit of detail later on. These compact domains. These compact domains are essentially what enable you to download these models, right? So if you change your domain from general to general compact, the model it's gonna build, it's gonna be uh, a smaller in size and it's gonna be in one of those open source formats, right? Uh, it's gonna be in those open source formats that you can download and use with TensorFlow or Keras or PyTorch or whatever um, to make your life easier to deploy this uh, in any scenario if you want or if you want to go but pro uh, programmatically. I will not go into uh, detail on how to do that. Uh, Nathan is going to share uh, links to the documentation and to the to the specific uh, how to export these models as well um, in the interest of time. Uh, but the good thing is that the documentation for as a custom vision is extremely simple. Um, it's extremely intuitive. They give you code examples as well. Uh, you know, it's very easy. You can just go ar go around and play with it, and a lot of it it's it, it's, it's self explanatory. Um, okay, so. That's about it um, for this introduction to Azure Custom Vision. Uh, we have maybe five minutes. I'm gonna go over the questions that we have. Okay. How well does this work with graphs? A scenario is to compare a previous data graph to a current data graph and indicate the, indicate the changes for review. Um, that's actually a very, very specific question. Um, I don't really have a concrete answer to that. My suggestion would be to go ahead and try it out. The thing I would actually mention in this scenario would be that your uh, model would only be essentially as good as your, um, the data that we show, right? So if you are able to make sure, if you're able to, uh, provide good data, if you are able to provide clearly labeled graphs and that so you know the the lines that you want to show or whatever that you the information that on the graph is actually very precise and very accurate and very clear uh, there is a chance that uh, it might work but i would not be very very uh, um, i would not be very confident about that because essentially detecting the information from the graphs is a, is a fundamentally a, a, a difficult and a different problem right it's not an object detection problem um, and it's not a classification problem. It's more of a, it more sort of goes into the edge detection domain. Um, and that sort of thing is not really supported by a custom vision at this point. But again, you know, you just try it out. If it works, good. If it works for you, so, you know, the problem is at your end. So if you think that the results you're getting, whatever results you're getting, if they're good enough for you, great. If not, you know, try something else. Um, does Azure Custom Vision offer popular open data sets like MNIST, MSNet, already available for the user to the user for training and other use? Um, no, they do not. 
um, at this point they do not you would need to do the download those uh, data sets they open right so you can download them yourself and you can upload them yourself um, but they're not really they're not um, avail made available uh, from beforehand um, can image labeling and tagging be automated um, I think I already discussed this but I'm going to go over this in a bit more detail uh, automation can be done by automation can be done by um, the smart labeling tool the tool that I discussed the information for that is in the documentation you can actually okay it's here how to use the smart labeler labeler just go through this um, and see how it works out for you and if it's if it's working well you know great but if it, it's not working that well uh, there is an API available uh, the catch here is that you would need to have information about what region and what tag is where and you would need to have the coordinates for them but if you can build this or if you can have someone build this um, this API does this automatically you don't need to go ahead and just poke around on the the image that I was doing earlier so you know you can do that okay um, I see that we have another question how can we avoid overfitting um, that's actually a very very interesting question right so overfitting in this scenario uh, we don't get a lot of options to uh, play around with uh, hyperparameters or something like that so the best thing that I could recommend or the best thing I would suggest is have very diverse images um, that sort of completely under so like that are uh, encompassing of every possible scenario that you can think of or as close to every possible scenario you can think of and then the other thing I would recommend is playing around with the training time so the, the more you train it the more chances the higher the chances are that you're going to overfit it right so I would recommend uh, having lower train times um, to get that level of accuracy you need or to level get that level of precision you need um, uh, and having a diverse data set right because that's the fundamental thing but uh, unfortunately the this this is this is what we call or this is an extension of what um, this is an extension of what um, uh, uh, sorry this is an extension of what we call auto ml right so auto ml has, uh, has been uh, get like most of the companies most of the cloud providers have been getting started with auto ml so this is sort of like an example of that it does things automatically it optimizes its models automatically so you don't get a lot of uh, uh, sort of like the ability to play around with the um, hyperparameters and stuff like that I hope that answers your question okay so do we have any other questions before we actually break I'm not seeing any. So thank you, Usman, for uh, joining us today and giving us this presentation.